Have you ever wondered how many chemicals are used to make your clothes? Or how much water is polluted as a result? What about the number of trees that were cut down to make your leather bag? Hi, I'm Kelly Drennan, founder of the nonprofit Fashion Takes Action. And I'm Samata Pattinson, CEO of RCDD Global. And today we're going to walk you through the life cycle of a t-shirt and how much pollution you might actually be wearing. The fashion industry is one of the worst polluters with a massive supply chain. You might not realize just how many steps are involved in making a simple t-shirt. Fashion supply chain and all its pollution begins at the raw material level, which is the material used to produce goods. In fashion, there are two main raw materials that go into making our clothes, polyester and cotton. Between the two, they make up for 82% of the fibers used. Polyester is a type of plastic made from petroleum, and it's the most common synthetic material used to make our clothes. To make polyester, crude oil is extracted from the earth and then undergoes a chemical reaction to be turned into plastic pellets, which are then melted down and spun into yarn. From there, it is made into a fabric to make our clothing. Roughly 342 million barrels of oil are used every year to produce polyester for textiles. Cotton is the most common natural fiber used to make our clothes, and it begins as a plant growing on a farm. Growing cotton requires water and irrigation, fertilizing and harvesting, and it's often grown in very water-scarce areas, leading to freshwater pollution and further water scarcity. Conventional cotton is one of the most pesticide-intensive crops in the world because it's vulnerable to insects and pests. These harmful chemicals are used to kill these pests so that the farmer can get the most cotton out of its crop. However, these chemicals not only kill the insects, but they're inhaled by humans and animals nearby. Once the cotton or polyester yarn is made, it then gets processed into a fabric, which involves things like bleaching, pre-shrinking, dyeing, printing and finishing chemicals, and is then washed repeatedly. And then there's leather. Turning animal skin into leather requires a number of toxic chemicals, like mineral salts, formaldehyde, coal tar derivatives, and various oils, dyes and finish, some of them cyanide based. Most leather is chrome tanned, and all wastes containing chromium are considered hazardous by the Environmental Protection Agency. And PETA reports that a chrome tanning facility wastes nearly 15,000 gallons of water and produces up to 2,200 pounds of solid waste from animal hair and flesh for every ton of hide it processes. And then there's the toxic wastewater that results from making leather. Globally, the tanning industry generates 145 billion gallons of wastewater annually. That's enough to fill 220,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. But the dumping of toxic wastewater is not just from the leather industry, but also from cotton and polyester. The toxic soup of chemicals left behind is extremely harmful to surrounding ecosystems, as well as communities who rely on this water for drinking and to grow food. It's interesting to note that for our clothing labels, there is no requirement to disclose any of the chemicals used in the production process, even though by some estimates, there are upward of 250 restricted substances used that pose potential health concerns. So when you shop for clothes, look for certifications that address chemical use in our clothes, such as GOTS, Lucine, and Okotex. Some products now have QR codes on the hang tags, so simply using your phone, you can trace the path of the garment, sometimes as far back as the farm. We've talked about cotton, polyester, and leather. But there are other fabrics that cause pollution as well. More than 200 million trees are logged each year from ancient and endangered forests to make viscose, rayon, modal, lyocell, and acetate. If placed end to end, those trees would circle the earth seven times. According to the World Resources Institute, cattle is the number one cause of deforestation of the Amazon rainforest and other tropical forests around the world. But fashion's pollution problem isn't only the responsibility of industry. Each time we wear and wash our synthetic clothes, nylons, polyesters, acrylics, tiny particles known as microfibers are released into the air and water, 
which can pollute marine life and even end up in our food supply. According to an ocean-wide study, synthetic fibers make up approximately 92% of microplastic pollution found in near-surface seawater samples from across the Arctic Ocean. There have also been recent studies that have found microplastics and microfibers in human lungs and blood. Clothes are being made and disposed of faster than ever before. They're viewed as disposable due to low price tags, low quality materials, and fast trend turnarounds. The t-shirt will behave differently in landfill depending on the type of fabric it's made from. Cotton and other natural fibers will eventually biodegrade, but as they do, they will release CO2 and methane into the atmosphere. Polyester, much like a plastic bag, will never biodegrade and will sit in the landfill forever, or at least a few lifetimes. Hi, I'm Eva. I'm Group SVP at Pangaea. Fashion is a very toxic industry. It's actually one of the world's most polluting. The interesting part is that none of us really knows a lot about what went into our product and how toxic they really are. Fortunate that there's new legislation on its way that actually demanding that brands are disclosing a lot more about their different green claims, but also that they disclose the combination of things that goes into a product. So you as a consumer should be able to know more in the future and you should always ask for more. Go on brands website, dig into what they say and ask questions directly. So now that you have more insight, how much pollution do you think you're wearing? <laughs>